Hey everyone! In this video, we'll dive into not one, but two RHCSA exam objectives. The first one being create, mount, unmount, and use VFAT, EXT4, and XFS file systems, and the second one being configure systems to mount file systems at boot by UUID or label. Alright, so let's do this. I'll switch over again to my root session on App Server 2, and we can start by talking about our storage situation. So as you can see right here, we've already provisioned some additional disks and partitions to this VM from the last video. So that's what we'll continue working with here. What I'll quickly have to do is create a few partitions on dev VDB, because I deleted them at the end of the last video. But this will be a good short review of that, I guess. So I'll open it up in CF disk dev VDB. And I'll split this disk up into three 2 gibibyte partitions. So I'll just do that. 2G, 2G, and 2G. There we go. And I'll set the type for one of them to Windows 95 FAT32. So we have the correct marking on this partition to have a VFAT file system. So let's see if I can find that. There it is. Cool. The other remaining two can stick with the Linux type, which is fine for ext4 and XFS. Okay, so that's great. Now we can write the changes. So just say yes and quit. And there we go. Now we can start formatting. So to format a VFAT file system, make sure that you have the DOS FS tools package installed. So I can just do that with yum install DOS FS tools. And as you can see, I didn't have it at first. So it's a good thing that we grabbed the package. Um, it's not always available out of the box. And there we go. Uh, we have it installed. Now we can run makefs dot VFAT and um, do this on our partition. So that will be dev vdb1. And some options that I'd like to talk about is the dash f option, where uh, in this one, you would specify the size of the file allocation table, like 12 or 16 or 32. You don't need to do this though. VFAT will automatically decide which is appropriate. So um, that's almost always fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and let MakeFS decide what's best. So there we go. One additional thing that I'd like to show as well is how to label this file system to tie into the other objective I just talked about. So we'll label each of our file systems after formatting them just to practice. And so simply to label this one, we'll run fat label dev bdb1 and then we'll call it a name like myfat, I guess. And now it's labeled. Cool. Now let's format an ext4 file system. We'll do this on dev vdb2, and we're simply going to run makefs.ext4, and I'll also just mention this as well, going back to my virtual data optimizer video, uh, if you were formatting ext4 for a video volume, you would probably want to pass the dash e no discard option uh, to makefs. We aren't going to need that for this one though, so I'll just leave that out, but it's something to keep in mind if you're using VDO. Anyways, we'll just pass our partition device, so that's dev vdb2, and then just run it. And there we go, the file system has been created. To label an ext4 file system, we would use the e2label command. So just simply run e2label and the device, so that's dev vdb2, and then the label. So I'll just call this one my ext4, and now it's labeled. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's format an XFS file system on dev vdb3. This is pretty simple as well. We would just run makefs.xfs dev vdb3. Um, but once again, there are some other options that I'd like you to be aware of, notably dash k, which does the same thing as the no discard option in makefs, and dash f, which is for force. 
If MakeFS detects an existing file system, it won't run the format unless you pass the force option. So we can leave out dash K, but I'll just turn on force. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference in this case. And we'll just format it. So there we go. And to label this one, uh, we'll just run XFS underscore admin dash capital L and then put in our label. So that's my XFS in this case. And then the partition device. So dev bdb3. And there we go. Now it's labeled. And bam. So we're done. Uh, we can check blk ID. Um, and there are our file systems. Here they are. My XFS, my ext4, and my fat. And uh, you can also see their UUIDs here as well. This one's a little bit short, but these are also pretty long. So yeah, of course, everything needs to persist on the RHCSA. So if they ever wanted you to prepare a disk partition with a file system on it, like we just did, it would be a good idea to put it in the fstab file. But before we do that, let's create some mount points for our file systems. So we'll just make dir slash mount, and I'll use some brace expansion again, my fat, my ext4, and my xfs, and this will create three mount points for us. So there they are. And now we can edit etc fstab. And this is where tmux also comes in handy. I'll switch to a second screen, and um, I'll just keep the first screen handy where we had blkid pulled up, so that when we edit the fstab file, we can go ahead and grab the uuid as needed. So we'll just open up etc fstab in a text editor, and there we go. Uh, we can create a new line down here, and let's add some entries. So we'll mount the vfat file system by label, so we can specify a label with label in all caps, equals, and then the name of the label. So that's just my fat. Next comes the mount point. So this will just be slash mount my fat. And then the file system type will just be vfat. And after that comes the mount options. So we'll just go with the defaults this time. And then there is dump and pass. So dump is for a legacy tool for backups that nobody really uses anymore. And pass is the field where we specify what order the file systems should be checked in. If we don't plan to use dump and we don't want the file system to be checked on boot, we can give both of them zeros, just like that. Um, next, we'll mount our ext4 file system by UUID this time. So we can just use uh, UUID equals and then i'll go back over to my other screen and grab that uuid so here it is for my ext4 just copy that and paste it in here there we go and so our mount point will just be slash mnt my ext4 our file system type is just going to be ext4 and for the mount options, we'll get a little fancy this time and assert that we want ACLs enabled on this file system by putting ACL right here. And we'll leave dump and pass as zero. Cool. Lastly, we'll mount our XFS partition by the device path. Usually, you wouldn't want to do this because the disk could be identified as dev BDB today and suddenly it could be dev VDF tomorrow, depending on how your machine initializes. So UUID and labels are better and more reliable options, but I'll just show uh, mounting by the device path for completeness. So yeah, that'll just be dev VDB3, and then our mount point is mount my XFS. The file system type, of course, is XFS, and we'll just go with uh, defaults this time. And the dump will be zero, and the pass will be zero once again. Cool. And we're finally done. We can save this file and check if it worked by running df first to see what's currently mounted. And then we can run mount-a and then check again. 
And there are our three file systems. They're mounted. And that's great. We can battle test this further by rebooting the node. So we'll just do that right now. And when it comes back up, I'll show you that it's still working. And yeah, as you can see, it's been mounted again without any intervention. So that's a good place to be in. And um, that'll be about it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And thanks for watching.